All right. Well, good morning. It's good to be here with you. And I'm here along with the team from the United States. And uh, they, uh, we have been uh, putting on an English course with New Life Fellowship this week. And uh, can I just say that you have an amazing pastor and an amazing team. They've done an amazing job this week. Yeah. And... Uh, he has to say that about himself. That's what's so great. So, <laughs> so um, we might have actually, have, we invited our students, so there might actually be some students here today. Yeah, so if you were a part of our school last week, will you raise your hand? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. If this is your first time here, can I encourage you to come back? This is a good, safe place to be. Alright, so as we do, as you do every week, we're going to look at God's Word. And I hope you have your uh, Bibles today, either on your phone or a copy of God's Word. And so today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 2 and also in chapter 3. So if you're brand new to the Bible, this is your lucky day, right? It's the very first book in the Bible. And so it should be easy to find. If you have to use the table of contents, there's no shame in that. No shame. <laughs> All right, so um, today we're going to be looking at and uh, talking about what happened in the beginning. We're going to be looking at uh, the story of Adam and Eve and the creation in the garden. And we're going to focus in today really on two trees that are located in that garden. And so it's good to study God's word. Amen? Yep. You're, ble you're blessed to be in a church that teaches you good theology. For many of us, we are followers of Christ. Some of you might be here today, you're on a spiritual journey, you're kind of checking things out. But when it comes to um, a relationship with God, you need to have a good foundation of what that means. And so your church has been going through a series called Being Salt and Light. About being focused on being salt and light, being a witness to your community and your nation. And that each of us have a personal responsibility in that. And so to understand how that works, you, you really need a good foundation. So for many of us that study the Bible, we, we understand some really big things about God. Not fully, of course, because God can never be fully understood. But God has given us His Word and revealed some things about Himself. We know that God is God, but He's in three parts. That God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We know that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, that He is sovereign. Uh, we've been taught, the Bible teaches that Jesus was, has always existed, even before the foundations of the world. But at just the right time, he came to earth in the form of a man. 
He lived a perfect life, went to a Roman cross and died. That he rose again on the third day, and because of that, we can have salvation. And that God has blessed us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. That when we come to faith in Christ, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. So that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. And the Holy Spirit is what teaches us and convicts us of sin and draws us unto God. Now these are all truths that we could probably most of us agree on. Because that's what God says about himself. And for most of us, we at some point in our life accepted Christ, we received his forgiveness. We realized we did not deserve that. And we realized because of our faith in Christ, we can have eternal life with Jesus. Yeah. So can we all say amen? Yeah, amen. We, we agree. Yeah, let's give God some glory. Praise. So, um, so with that said, though, let me, let me suggest something. Is that we can believe all of that. We can believe it in our mind and know it's true. And if that's the case, would you agree we should be the most happy, joyful people on earth? We should have a joy that people see in our lives that they don't understand. I would say yes. But can I just be honest with you? That even though I believe that to be true sometimes in my, I mean, it, even though I believe and know it's true in my mind, there are many times in my life where I do not experience the joy of the Lord. My daily life does not reflect the truth that I believe in my, in my mind. And I'll be honest with you, I begin to ask a question, why? Why, is this, why does this happen in my life? And to answer this question, we can go all the way back to the very beginning. You see, sometimes we in our mind, we have this expectation about what the Christian life might look like. If I come to faith in Christ, then all my problems will be solved. Come to faith in Christ and all my worries are gone. So, for me, that hasn't been the case. My guess for you today, there are many of you here that have come in here with heavy hearts. And maybe you've never thought about it, but you're like, what happened to the joy of my Christian walk? I still love Jesus. I still believe that he saved me. But the power and the joy in my life is not where I want it to be. And if I'm just honest, then sometimes I get really frustrated with my life. And I begin to feel guilty because I think, well, Jesus has saved me. I should just be joyful. And I know the right theology. I know the truth. Why isn't that translated into my life? And so your expectation is not matching your reality. And so it reminds me 
as we as we get some plants. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so it reminds me of uh, something that happened in my life um, last summer. So I have a daughter, a son-in-law, and a grandson who live in Hong Kong. And so I love my daughter and son-in-law, but can I tell you there's something special about that grandson? And so his name is Elias, and he was coming to visit this past summer. And so here's a little picture of Elias here. Yeah, yep. yep. not, not the one in the suit. He's but the one in the middle. Man, Spider-Man, yeah. yeah. And so I, in my mind, I begin to picture what it would be like when Elias shows up. He was going to be having his second birthday with us. And so I thought, I imagined, like, I will take Elias downtown into our city. And I will take him to this toy store. It would be a really great time. And I pictured that as we, as we went into this toy store, the doors would open up. And I would pick up Elias. And he would look at my face. He would look at me. He would say, OG. That's what he calls me, OG. Stands for like original gangster or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. And so he would say, OG. Can we buy a toy? And we would enter the store. Maybe bright lights would shine. Maybe angelic music would play. And Elias and I would go through the store. He'd, he'd pick up one toy at a time. He said, OG, can I have this? I'd say, oh yes, come, we will buy you a toy. We would very calmly walk and pay for the toy. As, as we left the store, birds would fly as we came out. Do you think that's how it went? He's two years old. In a toy store. We walk in the store and immediately he just starts grabbing everything, right? I, I just took him through the store and we went right back out. <laughs> So it was, I, I was disappointed. It was not what I had pictured in my mind. I was a little frustrated. But many times I think about this in my own walk with, with God. I know my mind, I picture one way it should be. But what happens in my daily life does not match what I know to be true. And so what happens many times when we feel this way, here's what we say. I'm just going to try harder. I just need to try harder. I just need to do more. If I do good things, if I read my Bible, if I give... Then I'm going to feel more Christ-like and I'm going to feel closer to God. And of course, these are good things to do. But this idea of just trying harder, where did it come from? Well, we can go, as I said, all the way back to the beginning. So today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 2. And we're going to be starting in verses 8 and 9. 
And so many of, many of us know the creation story. That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created by, uh, he just spoke into existence the animals, the, plant, uh, the plants. And then he breathed life into man. And then we know that Eve came from the rib of Adam. And God had a very special relationship with his creation. And so we start in verses 8 and 9, God is talking to uh, Adam and Eve. And, uh, and he's actually just he's showing them everything he's made. And in this garden are two trees. So let's read together. It says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we see in the middle of this creation, God plants two trees. And so God is planting these trees because from the very beginning, God wants us to understand something. That when it comes to our relationship with God, there are two ways we can relate to Him. And so I want you to imagine this is a, a big tree. <laughs> and it's planted in the garden. And God called this one the tree of life says he also planted another tree. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in the middle of this garden, God planted two ways we could relate to God. He mentions the tree of life. A tree rooted in spiritual transformation. And then he planted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowing rights and wrong and morals. So what do these two trees represent? Well, the tree of life is pretty, it's pretty simple. It's life, right? But can I submit to you that even in the the Garden of Eden, the Tree of Life, represents Jesus. That from the very beginning, God said, you will relate to me through my grace and my provision. And in other words, you could say this is the Tree of Trusting. From the very beginning, God wanted Adam and Eve to trust Him. Trust Him for their life and eternal life. But He placed also in the tree the tree of knowledge. And we'll call this the tree of trying. The tree of self-effort. Now you might be saying, Ron, how do you know that this represents Jesus in the garden? Well, Jesus himself called himself what? Life. And so we see in the book of John, starting in verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 25, it says, Jesus said, talking to uh, the woman at the well, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. 
one who believes in me will live even though they die. John 14:6 Jesus says I'm the way the truth and the life right No one comes to the Father except through me in John chapter 1 verse 4 he says in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. In John 3:36 it says whoever believes in the son has eternal life and whoever rejects the son will not see life. In the very beginning, it was always about God providing eternal life. And it was done through a free gift of grace that he would give. And this is how God wants us to relate to him, that it's putting all our faith and trust in him. But we also know in the story that eventually uh, the biggest lie, the greatest lie is told. And God knew that uh, if they did, if Adam and Eve did not choose life, that they would die. He told them, he said, do not eat of the tree of knowledge because in it you shall surely die. Of the tree of life, eat freely. Because in it you will find eternal life. But then slithers in the snake, right? And the snake tells a lie that has been going on since the beginning. He still uses it today. The devil in the form of a snake begins to cast doubt upon God's word. He says, did, did he really say you would die? He begins to cast doubt on how you have a relationship with God. Here's what he also does. He says, if you do something, you can be more like God. He's saying, there's something you can do, some self-effort that will make God love you more and you can be closer to God. And so what do we read in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 through 17? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In uh, Genesis 3, verses 4 through 5. The devil says this. He says, You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from, from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So what is, what is the devil tempting here? It's a temptation that feels right to us. That there is something I can do to be closer to God. Even me just saying that, some of you went, I don't, I don't know, Pastor Ron, that, that feels right. But think about the relationship of Adam and Eve at this point. There is nothing between them and God. Their relationship with God could not be improved in any way. They, they had, uh, there's nothing they could do to actually physically and even spiritually get closer to God. 
thái em tiếc đã đã thua ở tầm nẹt tầm nong lục ác đam nong peachim chas ắt rồi một chàng rú cai chàng bùng nhiên. But the devil tempts them into thinking there's something they can do. Vấn đề mía chấp đa một là buông thả miên ai muối đã đã nẹt ai thừa. He's saying take your eyes off the trusting tree. Cái chấp đa vậy thả cho đọ ca tục chết trên pi đam chơi đẹp đo chỉ vật. And begin to live your life by the trying tree. Hãy chấp đa đã ca tục chết từ lơ đam chơi đã 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 dương ai prang prang đã dương để dương. Because if, if you try hard enough, you'll get closer to God. Bà bà nẹ thưa vi tham tiệt nẹ nàng ai miên tụm nẹ tụm nong ắt rồi muốn chỉ muốn phải chìm chả. You try hard enough, you'll be a good person. Bà nẹ proper tham tiệt nẹ nàng chia một nốt đài 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 là o. If you try hard enough, God will love you more. Bà bà nẹ thưa tham tiệt phải chìm chả nàng sẽ lãnh nẹ tham tiệt. And so here's what happens: they take of this fruit, they eat it. Hãy nói chia với đại ca làng cứ buộc kia bàn bàn bè phải chơi chân bị đam đam nỉ. They give into the lie of self-effort. And does it draw them closer to God? It does the exact opposite. Because we see as soon as they do it, they realize that they are naked. And just as chapter 3 verse 7 Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Bên nu sập tại phe giờ bờ nẹt chẳng pi bàn phư làng hai đăng thả kê nơi khuôn tổ tề nẹt chẳng pi cậu bé sắc lụy to thưa chia băng bắt riêng cài. In the moment that they ate of the tree that God said would cause death. The tree of trying did not draw them closer to God. It actually put a barrier between them and God. Because in that moment they knew they would never measure up. They knew that they had a problem. We know because they went and they killed. Uh, they covered, tried to cover themselves with leaves. They were trying to do the only thing they knew to do. And then they went and hid. So rather than, draw, rather than drawing closer to God, they're now hiding from God. But bằng phim lẽ luôn. And it says that in the Bible it says that in the cool of the day that the God the Father began to walk and look for them. Hãy phép ông Pi bàn trai anh thàn nộp bê đại phong chưa biết rằng phong chấp đam đa một căn xuôi này đèn. It wasn't that God didn't know where they were. Phong mà xoay đọc bộ kì mình mình đây thà phong ngắt scroll bộ kì ở đâu bộ kì này nãy. You see, God was calling out to them. Cứ phong chấp đam miếng bê mình tu từ căn bộ kì hai bộ kì. Because here's what's so great about God. Is that God is always seeking those things that are lost. He's a seeking savior. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 to 10. Says that the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to them, Where are you? He answered, talking about Adam, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. So God goes seeking that which has now um, is separated from Him. They have sinned against God. God said, "Eat of the tree of life, and you will live forever." 
And they've chosen to eat from the tree of knowledge. And they're now on the trying treadmill of life. But the heart of God is always to seek and to save that which is lost. And then we see in the very beginning this picture of, of Christ once again. We read in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. It says the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. It's a very simple phrase in the Bible, a very simple sentence. But imagine what's happening here. At this point, there's been no death on planet Earth. And, and some animal who's done no wrong now, his blood is being shed. And God took the skin of those animals and he wrapped Adam and Eve in those. He did for them what they could not do for themselves. And once again, God is saying, I'm asking you always to eat from the tree of life. Live in the tree of trusting. So what does this mean for us today? There's a lot that we can take from this story. If you're someone who's never come to faith in Christ, your entire life right now, you are eating from this tree. You're working hard to, to gain value, to see if anybody cares. You're even, you're even wondering, can I do enough Good things to make God love me. And so we see that uh, for those that are far away from God, God is seeking today. But I would say for most of us today, what we can take away is, a, is an understanding of who we are in Christ. You see, to have that joy that Jesus talked about in our life, we need to understand that he's saying every single day we eat from the tree of life. That we live in the truth of his grace and mercy in our life. Realize that we bring nothing to the table when it comes to our relationship to God. That ultimately it's always on what God has done for us. And so, in the next few minutes, here's what I encourage you to do. We're going to look quickly in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 3. And I just want to give you some truths from God's word that you can uh, live by daily. That will help us to eat from the tree of life every single day. That when we're tempted to, to go back to doing it on our own effort. That we can lean back into the truth of what God has done for us. And so the very first thing is we have to realize that salvation is free to me and it sets me free. Romans chapter 3 verses 23 and 24 says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came 
by Jesus Christ. So salvation is free, but then here's what we also need to understand that God has covered my sins and your sins. Romans 3.25 says God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sin committed beforehand unpunished. Paul as a Jewish man here is remembering from Genesis all the way until his present day. From the very beginning when God wrapped that skin around Adam and Eve. All the way through the sacrificial system of the Jewish nation. Until the day that Jesus hung on the cross and died for our sins. He's saying now that Jesus is that perfect sacrifice. And that Jesus has covered our sins past, present, and future. And in doing so, he, we, he allows us to live by the tree of life. We can live in the grace and the mercy and the forgiveness He's provided. We don't have to listen to the lies of the evil one. Who says you're not good enough? You need to try harder. Do this, do that. And in doing so, you end up back on the trying tree and the trying treadmill. And then we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, this really good news that God has made us a part of his family. That he's adopted us into his family. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. บ่าวผู้คนบ่มันตัวตูลវិញ្ញាណដែលធ្វើឲ្យបងប្អូនទៅជាខ្ញុំបំរើហើយឲ្យនៅតែភ័យខ្លាចទៀតទេគឺបង
Everything that you owed and everything was taken, it was, it was zeroed, zeroed out. Chẳng, anh ấy chỉ bắt tầm loạt bảo kê, nợ pê, đại nhóm rộp nợ nà mới chỉ không thua xa bảo nhóm, à vây, đại bảo cô mà nâng, chung pẹ, chung phân, tăng bì môn mà, thợ minh trầy phiệp. Even your birth date was gone. Tụ bà tụ bê, hai cầm nát bảo hiếng cả đời, cả thợ bắt này. The legal document said that you were born on that day as a part of that family. Hãy nợ khăn ông chấp bắp bảo kê, nâng giấy thán, nẹ thợ bàn, cát nợ thằng ai ní, đại thợ bàn rộp bình chôn, nâng khăn ông xa mươi ní. Paul, Paul is saying this happens when we come to faith in Christ. Hãy lục bốn giấy, bạp dương thà, ní, chứ cách ca đại, cát mê láng nợ phê đại dương, rộp bình chôn, luôn dương, nợ khăn ông chung nứa. When we by faith accept Christ in his grace and mercy. Đói chung nứa bảo dương we are eating from the tree of life we are eating from the tree of life and we begin to uh, rely on God for our identity and our forgiveness and the Bible says that we are justified that all of our sins are gone and when God sees us he sees us through the righteousness of Jesus Christ and so how do you live that joyful life every day it starts by just acknowledging and understanding who you are you are someone that God loves you are someone that God has forgiven you are part of God's family and you have a heavenly father that you can call, call Abba Father and that God never asks us to relate to him with our effort it's always about His grace. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, you know, have rules and laws in our life. We know that Jesus taught His disciples disciplines in their in their own lives. The difference is our motivation for having those things in our lives. And so we're going to open up the altar here in just a minute. There will be people here if you want uh, to pray with somebody or just spend some time with God. And today could be a day if you're someone who doesn't know Christ. Then you can come and begin to start that conversation with somebody. Maybe you're someone here today who's trapped on that trying treadmill of life. You're having a hard time really believing that God accepts you as you are that God loves you unconditionally he's just saying come as you are come as you are just get before me and let me love you let me change you maybe you've got a relationship in your life and you just want to come and pray with somebody about that maybe there's a financial need everything is open there's an opportunity for you to come and so I'm going to ask you to come forward now and I want to pray over anybody that comes forward you can if you're a student and you have uh, test coming up let's pray over you as well we want to so encourage so you so, so if you'd like that, somebody to pray over you please come forward So I'm going to pray, and even after I'm done, you can come and continue to pray with people. So Father, we pray your blessings over all these people today. 
Father, you know what's going on in every one of their lives. Jesus, today we thank you that uh, you have, um, you are Lord and our Savior. And that uh, you have given us uh, forgiveness and grace and mercy. God, I pray for all of us today that we leave this place living and, f- and having fruit from the tree of life. Help us not to give in to the lie of just trying harder. Father, we pray for relationships here that need to be restored. We pray for any financial situations that might uh, be happening right now. Holy Spirit, thank you for being such a great friend and guide and and, uh, God to us. And Father, we pray for these students as they get ready to take exams next week. We just pray, God, you be with them, that you comfort them. So thank you for loving us. Thank you for being here with us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. ហើយខ្ញុំសង្គមថាព្រះបន្ទូលនៅថ្ងៃនេះពិតជាលើកទឹកចិត្តនឹងផ្ដល់កម្លាំងទៅដល់លោកអ្នកបងប្អូនអស